The Godox ML62 is a 70 watt bicolored light that I've had for some time now and I'm using it here in the studio. I've also had to use this light outdoors and it delivered on a very cloudy day. More about that later on in this video. There are already a ton of review videos about the spec of the Godox ML62 as it didn't just come out but for the key things that matter, the ML62 is an upgraded version of the ML60 that has a cylindrical shape. This one is more of a cube and is made out of hard plastic. I think it's smaller and also lighter than the previous model. It's bicolored and has a Godox Mini Bowens mount, so you should be able to use Godox MLGB Bowens mount adapter. You intend to use the full Bowens accessories instead of Godox Mini mount accessories. The first thing I thought of when I first held this in my hand was that it kind of looked like a red Komodo X camera, which was cool, although. This is a little, this is much smaller. Anyways, the Godox ML62 comes with a ton of accessories in a soft padded carry-on case. You get the light itself along with a power adapter. There is a handle that comes with a battery clamp and this battery clamp works with the Sony MPF batteries. One nice thing about the handle clamp is that you can either hand hold it or have it on a light stand. If you want, you can just prop it like this on a flat surface, although it may not be wise to do that because could just fall, but it's possible. You also get a normal tilt head that you would usually need in case you wanted to have it on a light stand. And lastly, its own mini Bowens reflector. I do not own original Sony MPF batteries as they're a bit more pricey than the off-branded batteries I own. With that being said, the ones I use here are able to take me through a day shoot, although I wasn't blasting it at 100% power. I would switch it off between takes. The ML62 is able to be powered via it's Sony MPF battery plate via DC. You can monitor your battery life by pressing the battery indicator here. Let me show you. Found on the battery plate. There is no USB-C port as found on its bigger brother, the Godox ML100BI that allows both USB-C and DC. So if you wanted to have a longer run time, you'd be better off powering this via VMAN battery using a D tap to DC or directly to the wall using this power adapter cable that comes in the kit. However, you can buy a different version of this slide kit. So instead of having the Sony MPF battery plate like I have here, you can do the V-mount battery plate. It's quite a small light as you can see, meaning you can carry it around anywhere without it taking up a lot of space in your camera backpack. It weighs about 530 grams, just the light itself, and it's made of a very, very high plastic, like I earlier mentioned, with the ventilation grills at the top and the bottom of the light. At the back of the light, as I spin it around, are all the controls a power on and off switch, two dial knobs, one for which is the function button and the other the dial and mode Bluetooth button. There's also the display screen that shows the current, color temperature, light intensity, and a lot more. One thing I like about this light, I want to use its cables, is that you can lock the DC cables to the light so that there are no mistaken disconnections, especially when moving around while using it. But note that if you were to use standard DC cables, you will lose that locking function. Another thing I like is the pivot arm that comes in the kit. I can assure you that it can support most Bowen mount accessories. It did not disappoint me with my own 90 centimeter parabolic softbox, nor with my 85 centimeter Godox lantern. Once locked, it stayed in place, which is very, very awesome. Here in my studio, I plan on replacing my key light, which is currently the Suncrafter S200B Pro 300 watt light with LED 4.0 tech with my Godox M100BI, which is currently the light I have here just behind me. So with the Godox M100BI as the key light, I can now use my Godox ML62 as my backlight. At the moment, I have the Godox M100 at 2800 Kelvin at 1% brightness, and it is still kind of bright. So at least at the same 1% with the Godox ML62, it shouldn't be so bright at 2800 Kelvin temperature. Another option would be to have the Godox ML62 rigged onto my Manfrotto auto poles that just up above, above me and then kind of provide some hair light. As in my setup here, there is no hair light on me. This light was so helpful when I had to shoot outdoors on a very cloudy day. It brought life to the set. When you have already set a day to shoot and the weather decides to frustrate or disappoint the whole week and the shoot must get done, this is where such a light comes very handy. It's only 70 watt, and on this particular shoot, I didn't even use it past 60% brightness. Just the light and its reflector, and I was able to get the job done. I was able to provide that kick, that small kick 
on my subject's face. And that was all I needed. Another thing was that it was drizzling a tiny bit. What I did was cover the top of the light with a plastic bag down to the battery. And I was still able to complete my shoot, even with the weather drizzling. Had no problems. It was just what I needed to have the shoot completed. When my subject moved about, I had an extra person hold the light at an angle pointing at my subject's face and did a good job. Trust me, thanks to his reflector. I have the Godox ML62, terrible lighting condition. There's no reflector on the light, it's just lighting me up. And I'm, I'm recording, ISO is 1250, aperture is 1.8, shutter speed is 50. Um, I also have, I don't have an ND filter on the lens, so it's just, that's just it. So I'll quickly come out from the app and I'll go to the Godox mobile app connected to the light. This is me without the light outdoors. And this is me on at 1% brightness. There's no reflector. And I'll take it up to, let's say 10%. It should be harsh on me. Um, I'll quickly grab the reflector and put it on the light. One second. So I had reflector. So now I have reflector on the light. This, this is me with reflector. Woo! It's falling. It's windy. It's windy, so I'm going to hold. It's kind of windy. Let me show you. This is my setup. That's the light. Using the back to like hold it because it's windy. 600 Kelvin on the light. That's my A74. That's my stuff. This is dangerous. It's raining. It's drizzling. Just going to show you. I have like a hat on it to prevent it from spoiling. That's, this is terrible. So let's get inside. For fun noise, before I switch the light with the Godox M100 to be my key light and this to be my backlight, just want to do a quick uh, fan noise test. Before we progress, just want to let you know I have a fan behind my Sony A7 IV, which is kind of keeping the camera cool. I also have a small rig, RC 60C colored light, which is just lighting or giving that blue light behind me. So this is the room tone. So this is the Godox ML62BI at 1% for 600 Kelvin color temperature. And with the Comica VM40 just away from frame, this is how the light sounds at 1%. And now I'll take the light up to 10% brightness. So this is how the ML62 sounds at 10% brightness. And now I'll take it up to 50%. This is how the ML62 sounds at 50%. And now I kick it up to, sorry, that's effects. Turn the down knobs to 100%. So now 100%. This is how the Godox ML62 sounds at 100% brightness. And now that that's done, let's swap out the Godox ML100 as my key light. And now use this as my backlight. All right, so I've made the swap. I have my key light, which is the Godox ML100. It's at 30% brightness at 600 Kelvin. I have my backlight with the Godox ML62 bicolored light, which is currently at 1% brightness. So already you can see the difference in, in terms of intensity of the backlight. Previously, the Godox ML100 used to be there. Now the Godox ML62 light is there. To my left is the Godox TL60 RGBW tube light, 60 inch tube light. That's at about 2800 Kelvin at, I think, 1 or 5%. Let me just confirm. So that's it at 18% brightness. So um, let me dial that down to, let's say, 5. So I've dialed back down the TL6 is 5% brightness. I'll go out. Now this is how this set will look with all the Godox lights turned off. There's only just a few lights on, as you can notice. Um, the matte light, which is the ZSYB JB150 bicolored light. 
There's a small light in the lamp and there's an RGB light, which is lighting up the space. So if I turn on my tube light, so that's with the Godox TL60 turned on at 5% brightness with 800 Kelvin. Next, I'll turn on the Godox ML62, which is the backlight at 2800 Kelvin. I'm using the mini Bowens adapter and parabolic softbox on that. And then my key light, which is the Godox M100 at 600 Kelvin, set at 30% brightness. Now, from the app, the Godox mobile app, you can see, I can turn off all the lights by just tapping the go off and tapping again to bring them on. Isn't that easy? That's just easy. I wish I had the other lights in this set, all Godox lights. It'd just be easy for me to just turn everything, power everything on from my mobile app and power them off, dial them as I want. If I want to make my key light brighter, I can take it up to say 50% brightness, but I think I like it at, let's see, let me leave it at 35% brightness. So, and then I can bring up the 62, the ML62, that's 17% brightness. I'll just take it down to 1%. And I'm using, I'm having it, it's been powered using the Sony MPF battery. Um, yeah, so that's just gonna just make things easy with no modifier. This is how the ML62's beam spread is. It produces a very even beam and the results are the same regardless of the CCT dialed in. And I expected the shadows are well defined. Now with this reflector, this is how the spread of the beam is. Results are the same once again, irrespective of the CCT, you also get multiple shadowing. With Godox Mini to full Bowens adapter and reflector applied, this is how the spread of the beam is. Result in the same regardless of the CCT dialed in, there is multiple shadowing. There is no fan setting for the ML62 portable light. You are also unable to power on and off the built-in cooling fan, although there is not much of an issue as the light is not that noisy. Having that extra kick of light coming from such a small light like the Godox ML62 is an absolute must. So if you are interested in getting such a great light from Godox, please check out the link in the description box below. And also let me know what you think about this light in the comment section below. It's your filmmaker. Remember, like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.